My name is Vincent Jeffrey, and this is the Workers' Rights Platform. We are broadcasting live from the Workers' Rights Network. Now, we have a crime problem in Trinidad and Tobago that nobody wants to take responsibility for. But yet still, we have a Prime Minister who is the head of the National Security Council. We have Attorney Generals who are responsible for implementing certain things in terms of where law is to keep the Prime Minister lawfully inclined. And yet still we have a Minister of National Security. We also have a Commissioner of Police. We have a plethora of, of law enforcement, police, army, customs, coast guard, air guards. And yet still crime is out of control in Trinidad and Tobago. And us, the citizens, are who is paying with our very life. You see, the thing about it is this. The people of Trinidad and Tobago. When you sell yourself for nothing, you get nothing in return. Come on, our children, brothers, mothers, sisters, are dying. And we just rock back like if never happen. Do we not care for your fellow men? Do we not care for your sister? Your brother? Now, the Holy Bible would have stated this. If you say you love God and you hate your brother and your sister, he's a liar and the truth is not within you. You can't love government more than yourself, and more than the people. So the crime to the Prime Minister would have, would have initiated some crime talks that would have been taking place all through Trinidad and Tobago. The opposition, which is the UNC, would have been trying to engage Rowley, our Prime Minister, into these same crime talks. And he would have, he would have said no. He's not saying no and talk to Gary Griffith as if, as if Gary Griffith is not a, a member of the public. Something wrong with this Prime Minister. You know? And he not. I, I, I could understand the fanatics, but something is wrong with our Prime Minister. Again, my name is Renison Jeffrey. This is the Workers' Rights Platform. And he, come now, man, this read this bullshit. Why it is now these crime talks was necessary? You didn't see that as a, as, as a burning issue. Some time Abba. Again, my name is Renison Jeffrey. This is the Workers' Rights Platform. Like, share, and subscribe. Be a part of our audience on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, in which we go into serious political issues. With that, I am out. Now, Prime Minister Keith Christopher Rowley, people are not stupid again. The full force of the law. What was taking place all the time? I think that people are not stupid again. Huh. Good night, Trinidad and Tobago. When are we going to take crime, murders, and gun violence seriously in Trinidad and Tobago 
and call out the PNM government. Call out Keith Christopher Rowley, the Prime Minister of this failing country. Call out the Minister of Security, Hines, to step down. Call out the Commissioner to, to also step down and make the call to this country to not just call out the government on crime and the bloody murders and gun violence and everything else that is connected to crime and criminality in this country, but also heed the call coming from the Trinidad and Tobago Democratic Front, our organization, to shut down this country. Imagine feeling so unsafe in your country, so unsafe in your homes, so unsafe in your communities, so unsafe on your jobs, so unsafe traveling in your own vehicle, going to the banks, going to the groceries, taking a children to school, so unsafe on your jobs, so unsafe Trinidad and Tobago. I had my fair share. I have lost family to crime, robberies, murders, you name it. I have had my incident with four gunmen telling me to come to take me for a trunk ride to stay out of PNM business. Thank God I was known. Now, all this any Prime Minister talking about um, political um, violence in, our, in America and what happened to Trump and it, it is, is something that shouldn't happen when it comes to democracy and all kind of political bullshit. But you ain't seen him standing up for Trinidad and Tobago and firing Heinz, firing the commissioner police or making his steps and putting in place the protocols to get rid of these people that has failed, failed when it comes to crime fighting or any type of crime fighting in Trinidad and Tobago. This so in 2015, 2016, El Salvador was perhaps the most dangerous country on earth. They had one of the highest homicide rates on the planet and the streets were controlled by um, gangs, MS-13, Barrio 13. These gangs were doing um, drug blocks, uh, drug dealing, extortion. They were collecting vast amounts of money off of those businesses. And they were able to bribe police officers, they were able to bribe judges, and they had basic impunity um, with what they were doing. Um, the police tried so many things to dislodge them. They, they went in in massive police operations, um, iron fist they called it, and uh, I, I, they failed completely to break the control of the gangs, I don't think, they couldn't secure convictions. It was very similar to the situation we're seeing in Trinidad today, where you have um, uh, police officers, judicial officers, etc., on the payroll of some of these gangs, and, and it's, it's almost impossible to, to arrest them and keep them off the streets. Um, the situation in El Salvador changed, however, with the, um, there was a shake-up in the politics, and this uh, young um, president was elected, a uh, change agent, Nayi Bukele, and he came in and he really set out um, to get the situation under control and you know he took some extreme measures uh, basically he purged the judiciary of the judges and replaced uh, he appointed 150 judges and he did he declared a state of emergency uses majority in parliament state of emergency and then they arrested in the first two months 30 more than 30,000 people everybody who was suspected of being a gang member affiliated with gang members they arrested tens of thousands of people built a mega jail because you know they couldn't they couldn't even hold all these people and broke the back of the the the, the entire gang operation the entire drug block operation the entire um um, the, the extortion network. So instead of trying to go to the top and dealing with, with there, which was really not with the wiped out the entire bottom and, and, and broke the entire infrastructure, the gangs. And the, the result was, I mean, the El Salvador went from being one of the most dangerous countries on earth to being one of the safest countries on earth in just a matter of a few years, right? And Bukele now has an approval rating from his population over 90, 90%. He's, he's, he's one of the most popular leaders on earth um, because of what he did to restore um, safety. Um, to El Salvador. Now, the, the point I want to make here is not that Trinidad should go about copying what El Salvador did, right? Um, he found a solution that worked for his country. We need to find solutions that work for our country. But the point I want to make is that as bad as the situation may seem, as desperate as things may look, as much as you think that this, there's no way anybody's going to get control of this, there is always a way to do it. So long as there is will and honest, good intention and effort, there is always a way to do it. Um, looked at El Salvador. They thought the situation was impossible. Um, Bukele found a way to do it. To, to, to do it. And we here in Trinidad as well. Um, the situation may look bleak, but there's always a way to do it. All right? You all have a good day. Now look at this here, ladies and gentlemen. 
scored victory for Ola in FUL cases. It didn't strike in our bell, right? Because many of you are not paying attention to the media and the type of inconsistencies that exist. Now, Miss Christopher is saying that is a victory for her in these cases and then. In some cases, men would have applied for FUL firearm user's license and it was denied. And the renewal and that whole heap of bacchanal. But watch what the Prime Minister is saying. Or you had a thinking, or you had a watch with his mama guy outside here. You know? I will show you what the Prime Minister is saying. And you tell me for yourself. Now, <laughs> I have to dry my face. Prime Minister lament crime. Laments crime. Use of high powered rifle. Are you not thinking that if you give these citizens a fighting chance, something can be done? Not everybody's fools. In it. Not everybody could take a gun and shoot a mango thief or a pomerac thief. <laughs> but yet still, the commissioner of police paying up is a victory for and you saying you lamenting. This thing real but I mean. Why are you not trying to help? Right, citizen, take a look at this picture here. May I motley want Barbadians to unite in the fight against crime. She want Barbadians, everybody, to unite in the fight against crime. And knowing many of uh, reading or listening to plenty of the statements that were coming from Maya Motley, we would have known that she's a person that believes in coming together. Let me give Jackie Jackie. The opposition would have been have, trying to have crime talks with Keith Christopher Rowley. Why is the opposition doing that? That is not that is not a role for the government. Now, I feel you, Mr. Prime Minister, should take a page out of the book of Mia Motley. Because she would have seen the need to involve all stakeholders. Stakeholders are crying out likewise because they're fed up now. They're fed up. They would have seen we fed up now. Let's do something about this. Now that's the news article here. Yeah, enough is enough. Stakeholders are fed up businessmen that are being robbed. They're fed up. Average citizens, are you not fed up though? Now we are brought, we have been broadcasting on this network and we would have take a little break, you know, to shift around in how we do our thing. But in no like manner, we will continue to bring issues and highlight the facts to you that you could be able to see what is going around in and around Trinidad and Tobago on a daily basis. I and my son are recovering from dengue. That dengue outbreak that we would have discovered, that mass amount of dengue breeding a mosquito in the Point Fortin area, we would have uncovered the causes for such. Again, my name is Vanessa Jeffrey. This is the Workers' Rights Platform. Like, share, and subscribe and be a part of this fastest growing network. Reach out to us, let us come on a personal level and do these interviews with you and air them live again i am out there we go hi good day everyone i'm candace edwards and i'm here with can mr can yes can we are the advocate for justice 
and look on our YouTube channel on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturday. Well, Saturday is the Bacchanal time where you can call in. Bacchanal and Saturday. Bacchanal Saturday, we call in that. Where you can call in and bat, okay, man. Bat, okay, woman. Let's sit and have a chat. Right? Mr. Khan? 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Make sure and call. Bacchanal Saturday. But we'll be on a Tuesday and Thursdays as well for all those hardcore issues that are affecting you. Water, mosquitoes, parliamentarians will be there. Call in and talk, we'll be coming to you to do interviews, show in the videos, and then we'll be airing them. Yes, for everyone to see, so you too can have a voice. Whatever situation you would have been facing in the past and even in the present time now, you can come out, you feel free to call. We are your voice. Let us stand in the gap for you and bring this, this situation out into the light. This video was born because of a lot of people commenting. So we're trying to give the people a, a voice. So make sure and tune in. Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturday. Back on all Saturday. Well, I get it. <laughs>